Hello, this is Gabi. I'm the person who's organizing the 2020 Pindloom Mystery Weave Along. And uh, today I want to just give a brief introductory video. We will not be doing a video every week, but I thought it's, it's nice to just chat things up and explain a few things to uh, get you all going. All right, so let's take a look. 2020 Pindloom Mystery Weave Along. And um, before we dive into details, let's take a quick look at what we got here. So this weave along uh, will be for pin loom weave along will be for two looms. We will be using the Schacht Zoom loom and we will be using the original title loom and the regular pin set for worsted weight yarn. Uh, you will be able to use either one. So if you have a zoom loom or a hexagon loom, you can use either one. Uh, you don't have to do use the zoom loom if you have a wonder wag or a weave it or any other square loom, that's perfectly fine. Um, the calculations that I will be providing are for the four inch uh, loom that's woven with the traditional three pin uh, group setting. So where you uh, wind the yarn three rows and then just the fourth layer is uh, is woven. Um, if you want to use an, any other loom, you can please contact me and I will help you to figure out the right yardage. Um, on the hexagon side, I'm using the turtle loom for regular yarn, uh, which is our regular setting, uh, pin setting which means for worsted weight yarns, you can also use the fine set, no problem. Or you can use a larger or a smaller hexagon loom, in which case only the yardage that is required will change. For our weave along, I'm using the Caron Simply Soft, but you can pretty much use any yarn that you want. I chose the Karen Simply Soft because it works on the Schacht Zoom Loom and it works on the Turtle Loom. So I can use the colors uh, on uh, the same way on both looms. Colors. I went stash diving uh, because like so many of you, um, we're bound, homebound. And so I went stash diving. Um, for this weave along, we will use uh, four colors. One will be the background color, and then uh, we have three contrasting colors. Um, they don't really have to be contrasting, but just for purpose of demonstration, I chose an off-white as the background color, and then this yellowish as a contrasting color one. The teal is contrasting color two and the red is contrasting color three again these color choices are just my color choices you can use whatever you can find in your stash all right um on the schacht zoom loom i just wove up some samples and they look like this background color contrasting color one contrasting color two and contrasting color three. So every time in my messages or emails or documents, when I will refer to those colors, that's what I'm talking about. The same colors here on the uh, turtle loom background color, contrasting color one, contrasting color two and contrasting color three. All right, so um, it will be very important that we get the setup right. And this is one reason why I'm doing this little video to walk you through the first document. Um, why is this so important? Because we're calling it a mystery. Uh, other than the things that I just told you, uh, I'm trying to not to reveal too much because what we will be doing is we will have over the next six weeks a project where each week we do a piece of the project and after six weeks we will get together and assemble the pieces into our mystery project. Um, why mystery? Well, um, 
I think because we haven't done any one yet. And I will tell you the little story for it. Last year in, uh, in the fall, uh, I attended my first knitting mystery weave a uh, knit along uh, with Stephen West. He has been actually doing this every year for 10 years. And for me, it was the first time. And um, he said, you know, just get two colors and here's how much you need. And then we'll just uh, keep going as we're going and just knit along and trust me. And to me, this was like, okay, I'm getting this yarn and I'm getting these amounts of yarns and I have no clue what this will be turning into. And um, of course it was, it was a shawl because that's what he usually does for his knit alongs. Uh, but other than that, there was absolutely nothing given. So this was um, teaching trust in just, okay, keep going. It will turn into something. And uh, I saw other people's uh, yarn choices and was like, oh, this looks interesting. And then this really? And so this was a complete trust into just, you know, knit what you knit and it will turn out beautiful. I was actually amazed uh, in the end to see the, the most beautiful variety of shawls all knitted uh, after this pattern. This is the Starflake pattern, uh, but the different expressions and effects. And I think it would have been hard to even plan uh, for these effects. And so I thought, wow, uh, this, this is something we should do in weaving too. Pretty much just pick colors and then weave and uh, see what effect we will get. Trust the colors, let the colors do the job and um, uh, just trust the process, weave along and enjoy in the end uh, what you get. So I hope that we will see many good surprises in the end from the yarn choices uh, that you make. And again, this... Um, relax on your yarn choices and just enjoy the process and enjoy what you will get. It will be exciting and hopefully mysterious. Anyways, thank you Stephen West for this beautiful idea. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, let's take a quick look at our first um, working document here. Let me move these things aside a little bit so that I can um, I hope we can see this. Yeah, okay. So this is the uh, week one document that you all can download from the Texas Gabi blog. And I will also uh, post it in the file section of the uh, Pindom Weaving group uh, on Facebook. Um, so this is the outline of what I would like you to, or what I would like us to do this week. Um, there are two goals this week. First is to finalize our loom and yarn choices. And secondly, we will weave the first six squares or hexagon and assemble them. So there's quite a bit to do this week. Um, one thing I would like to mention at this point, um, you have those weekly tasks, but if you are, uh, if you need more time, please take more time. This is absolutely no stress. Uh, we have enough stress in our lives. We don't need it when we are weaving. So all of the resources will stay available uh, for, for as long as the internet want, will let us. Um, and so if you are a little bit slower or you want to change things around, uh, don't feel stressed, just enjoy the process. All right, what do I mean with finalize the choices? Um, I would like you to decide on a loom first, if you want to do the zoom loom or the turtle hexagon pin loom or any other loom of your choice, and then write it down here. So I made a space uh, here for your loom choices. Why am I doing this? I think it's actually quite fun to have a little record of what we will be doing. Uh, and it's also a good reference uh, after all. So. I have two choices here for looms because I already have heard from some people that they would like to do um, two uh, looms, a hexagon and a square loom. So my loom choices here, I will say is uh, one is the zoom loom and the other one is the turtle 
four inch and I will be using the regular and this is four inch zoom loom there is no other zoom loom it's always four inches I hope you can read this um but you know if you use an any other loom for example the weave it or the wonder rag they come in different sizes all right this is a good starting point because at that point you say okay i know which loom i'm going to use the next part is to decide on the yarn um, as we said you need uh, four colors and uh, make sure make sure that you choose a yarn that will work for your loom uh, so basically this one uh, for the zoom loom they work very well with uh, dk uh, american dk level and uh, you know here for the regular loom worsted weight uh, or something hybrid like the the Karen Simply Soft, which goes as a worsted weight, but it's a lighter worsted weight, so it works on the zoom looms and on the turtle looms. But pretty much anything works. Uh, if you have an unknown uh, yarn, for example, uh, or a hand spun yarn, uh, give it a try. Weave a sample and see if you like what you get. That's the best way to find it out. So make sure. Um, Weave a sample, make sure that you like the fabric that you are getting and make sure that you like to weave it because six times six you will be weaving uh, 36 motifs over the next six weeks. Um, if, it's a, if it's a dread to weave one, you should probably look for another yarn. Um, if you, given the current situation, uh, are not able to find a yarn that you like, please contact me. You can always... Um, the document has my contact information in it all right so once you um on the second page you have this these little charts and this is uh, one is for the zoom loom and the other one is for the original turtle loom uh, and there are little fields uh, i want you to take a snippet of your of your yarns so let me just do show this quickly here so uh, take just a snippet of your yarn and uh, tape it into the field, maybe with a little piece of tape. So for example, here, Zoom Loom, the background color, I want to use the, um, the off-white. And my first contrasting color will be the yellowish so i cut off a little snippet here and i'm just doing this very quickly now so that you get the idea this is my first contrasting color my second contrasting color is the teal little piece and tape my third one is the red snip and tape the reason why i'm do i suggest this is um i will ask you to weave that and that and over the next several weeks and put them together in a certain sequence this if you do it something like this it will help you to um have an, a reference for example when i say do a background color and a cc1 and a cc3 just to have so, so that you have a, a reference point for checking um, you can do something like this very quickly and the same thing for the um, for the hexagon loom uh, if you use different colors um, as a reference all right so this was this and then uh, next this week I want you to weave samples and uh, one reason is to find out if you like the yarn but the other reason is that you can actually see the woven squares or hexagons next to each other so if you put them out like this you can see oh yeah this is my background color and my first and second and third contrasting color I like that or when you see your yarns and say, oh, you know what, I really would like the this one to be my background color and then first, second and third or something like that. So do this for your squares or for your hexagons. 
to make a final it's pretty much to verify your choices and i have seen some people that have very pretty uh yarn with different uh character like bucle or variegated or sparkly or something like that once you weave those samples you can really see how the yarn works in your weaving and at that point you can finally verify yep yeah, that is my uh background color one two three supporting colors all right um this is not wasted samples are always very important but this is not wasted you can actually use those weavies um in your project but at this point uh you know also go and go ahead and take a picture okay um that's one of the things that i have here as a to do in your documents you will see let me just hold this up a little bit closer you will see here to do when you see that that means i would like you to do something and post it uh, either in ravelry or on facebook so uh, the first to do this week is post a picture of your samples telling which color is background c1 cc2 and cc3 so this is like background cc1 cc2 and cc3 doesn't matter what what direction you have them as long as you label them okay so that's your first to do and then take a picture and post it online uh now we get to the second the second part is that we get to uh to weaving the actual things and you will see week one weavies you have this little chart here that tells you if you are weaving squares i want you to weave weave two squares in background color two squares in cc1 and two squares in cc2 if you chose to weave hexagons this week i want you to weave two in the background color two in cc2 and two in cc3 you see that the instructions for squares and hexagons are different this is uh, you will. Uh, this is because you will make different designs. Um, they they both go well together. Both are thirty six thingies, um, but they will look different and they will be created differently. After you have woven them, um, I want you to assemble them and then provide little charts here on what I want you to assemble. For the squares, take a contrasting color one when I just put them out right here and then the background color and the contrasting color two so this would be for my choices for my choices this would look like this CC1 background cc2 and i want you to make two of those all right um i want you to sew them together and i know that a lot of people have this this fear of sewing things together um but it's really you know it's really so easy you can be done like in 10 minutes if you if you just get to it have those next to each other and you probably see that I did not cut or weave in the ends I use those ends to sewing things together um, so if you have them laid out actually this is the start this is the end start end start and end if you lay them out like this like they come off the loom pick up the first two and you see how those scallops go into each other and just sew those scallops together you can find a lot of information online or in your groups just ask around to look at a few pictures uh, it's really it's really very easy to do so for for the first week for the squares contrasting color one background and contrasting color two those three sew them together and make two of them so this means for this week you will have two 
strips of three squares. For the hexagons, I want you to do two different stri strips of three. This is how they come off the loom and it's not clipped. Start with a background color and you see those, those here, background color, CC2, CC3, background color, CC2, and CC3. So this is the first strip that I want you to make this week with the hexagons. And again, uh, put them in front of you the way they come off the loom. You pick up the first two and you see there's a handy spread in a good color and you just sew through the loops down down the row and you're done with it okay so the first strip is background cc2 cc3 and then you make another strip background cc3 CC2. If you are not sure if you got it right, take a picture before you um, sew them together and send it or post it or send it to me. Uh, and based on your first chart, um, on this chart, we can compare and I can tell you, yeah, you got it right or not. Okay. So, all right. To do, post a picture of your finished week one pieces. So if you're doing squares, you will have two of the same pieces, three squares each, both look the same. If you do hexagons, you will have two pieces, uh, but they look slightly different. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's everything I have. Yeah, the document has and on the last page, a few informations on, uh, you know, where you can join, when we start, how long it will take, uh, and things like that. Uh, give it a try. Again, ask any questions that you may have or concerns or comments, either on Facebook or on Ravelry. Um, and I'm very much looking for, we will also have a Pinterest board. Uh, many of you already have contributed to that. So on our Pinterest board, we will just collect pictures from our mystery weave along as it progresses over the weeks. All right. I hope you enjoyed this little overview and found it useful. And I hope to see many of you online soon. Bye-bye.